Hello, hello, everyone. Kyle, a zero Z. Welcome to the earlier Thursday night stream. We are two hours early, and I've got over here my friend Max in G7M. Hello, Max. How are you? Hi, Kyle. Glad to be back with you. And hello to anybody that's uh, you know started early on in the stream here. Glad to have you. Yeah, we um. So we have Max. Max has been on the channel quite a few times in the last uh, I don't know couple of weeks, and uh, if you didn't see stream number one, he and I talked about cluster servers and kind of the history of cluster servers and some basic, you know, how do you get into them? How do you telnet into them? Why the port is 7373? Why the port is 23? What, you know, all of that stuff. In this stream, we didn't get to, we got a little bit into the more advanced command set, but tonight, Max is back because he runs the NC7J cluster server. And we are going to get into advanced command set on um, the, the cluster servers and probably why you would want to do some of these advanced commands. And actually, you know, um, why not only are they good for contesting, but they're good for DX, they're good for filtering. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do on cluster servers that I had no idea that you could do. So we're gonna go over that. And then if we got some time later, we're kind of limited to an hour, but if we have some time, we're gonna take a dive into the back end to the server end of a cluster server. So if you potentially want to maybe run your own cluster server, I think Max is probably a good, resource to give us some tips on what to do and and uh he's just going to show us the back end so i find all that stuff fascinating so um so to get started um max do you want to what do you want to do do you, we want to to get into some commands of uh just some examples or how, how do you want to how do you want to start you think yeah, let me. Um, I'm. I've got. You're sharing that screen. Just I've got my high, highly sophisticated PowerPoint there. Yeah. Let me. Um. Yeah. So we're gonna add. Let me add this and let me uh, get that back. So now we're gonna talk. I think we were gonna talk about what the difference is between spots. But I think you got some other stuff um, popping up here on on the NC7J stuff. So let's start with that. Yeah. So. So you're. I guess you're. You're sharing the uh, I am. screen. Okay. I am, yep. So first of all, too, if anybody's watching, um, and I touched on this a little bit in the last live stream, you'll need to know what flavor of cluster server software you are using to access. Um, and I really think it's worthwhile, especially if you're into DXing and contesting, like me, that you understand kind of the low level, the, the direct telnet connection and the data that is coming back to your computer or your logging software or your contest software. Yeah. So um, that'll be some re research on your end. I run and I'm familiar with what, what is called AR cluster, AR6. And um, <clears throat> AB5K, who died uh, about 12 years ago now, well, maybe 10 or 12 years ago now, unfortunately, he wrote the version of the server that I use, and it's really popular. Um, in different in North America, I think, but there, there's worldwide sysops that use this software. So you need to know if you're running AR6, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. But all the concepts will apply if you're using, for example, Lee Sockin's uh, VE7CC server, which is good. It's they're all good stuff. So there's really three primary ones: AR6, VE7CC's implementation. Um, and then uh, DX Spider, which I believe is written in Perl, which is really popular in Europe, for example, and you know outside of North America, um, primarily. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to be connected to AR6, and don't be confused because if you connect to a, a VE7CC node, these commands you're going to see us showing and demonstrating won't work. Some of them might like show DX, you know, right. the basic ones, but it's all it's different nomenclature for the uh, syntax for the different commands. Or, or if you're on DX Spider, it's going to be different. So, again, think AR6 here. You'd have to be connected to an AR6 node. So. It's almost like operating systems on. So some of the commands for Windows will not work with Macs that uh, might work with Linux, but uh, you could – there is some overlap, but, but you have to know what system you're connected to, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like 
PowerShell and you know Windows or just yeah. a regular command prompt as compared to a Bash shell in, in a Linux system or you know shell or right. you know, it, it's kind of like that. So okay, well um, the the other thing is I just wanted to touch on and I know this is a little bit of a digression. So you're seeing the two server ports that I have available DXC as in DX cluster or you know DX cluster DXC .nc7j port seventy three seventy three which you should remember, and port 7374. Now, in the world of AR6 clusters, um, we don't combine um, FT mode skimmer spots onto a node or a connection that has human and skimmer spots for CW and RTTY. Gotcha. So the first one here, right, that will be human spots and CW skimmer spots and or, well, RTTY skimmer spots. Okay. This port will be FT modes, and we'll, we'll talk about that, I think, a little later. Okay. So, and, and then uh, just to continue on, just a little review of spots now. So we know, hopefully, you guys have connected and you, you see the spots coming in. You're going to see this format. This is a standard format across all the different, for the most part, across all those server implementations that I talked about. So a human spot will have DX, DE, as in from, and this, these are real spots that I copied over. So Whiskey 7, Bravo, Oscar, Bravo spotted II5 WWA here and um, on 17 meters. In AR6, there's an option you can turn on to show the originating state of the spotter. So that's the guy that spotted it. He's a human, right? More than likely, 99% chance he's a real person. Mm -hmm. that you know, He worked this guy and he decided to share the wealth. He decided to send that spot out, which propagates through the whole worldwide network of cluster servers. Right. And of course you've got the time. So here, you know, this section here is a comment section. So on human spots, you're going to get all kinds of stuff in this comment section. Sometimes stuff you shouldn't see. <laughs> most, of the, <laughs> yes. most, of the, most of the server software filters all those, you know, dirty words, that kind of stuff. Um, but I love so whenever people are having conversations on the cluster servers. Uh, yes, yes, that drives me insane. But <laughs> and they'll try to talk to the de-expeditions, to the send spots, as though the guys working the de-expedition are reading the comments in the spots. But maybe sometimes the pilots for the de-expedition will see some of that stuff. But it, it drives me insane, especially when they spot them on a band where they're not working. Because then everything's <laughs> yeah. hard to go off. Like it's some band you need them on. And they spot them just to say, you know, when are you going to operate SSB on you know, 80 <laughs> meters or whatever? So anyway, you got to you got to rein me in, Kyle. So <laughs> back, back to the comments. Um, so this N7 ARN here, he probably has software that automatically sets th this comment to show his grid to, uh, you know, that the, he's in DM43 and TX5S on Clipperton Island is in DK50. Um, so he, his software may do that automatically. Oh, and, so what, and, what you're saying there, Max, is somebody somebody spotted uh, TX, uh, TX5S TX and he sent that spot via not your cluster server, but maybe some other cluster server. And whenever they spotted through that cluster node, the the automatic comment or maybe the comment if you don't put a comment that cluster server was programmed to put the grid square and and that comment in right before it got sent yeah well not the server more than likely not the server it would be his client software so maybe oh using, okay gotcha yeah so he, he might be using um i use dx lab so he may be using something else logic five gotcha. or whatever okay there's a lot of good logging software out there. So I suspect, you know, who's going to take the time to punch all this in in the comment and then send the spot? Yeah. Um, now, this one, he, you know, N0UR, he probably punched in USB just to make sure everybody knew that 14265 was upper side bin. He worked <laughs> at, you know, station in Poland there. And he's in Minnesota, right? This is a cool thing for AR cluster. And the other ones probably do something like this too. Um, re regardless of the call sign or call area, this on an AR cluster node is using a dynamic lookup on it, a weekly updated FCC database. So yeah. you know that that station originated, he's located in Idaho, you know, 99, you know, unless he's 
if he's off in some other country using his call sign, it's still going to think he's in Idaho. Right, right. This is based on one. So, okay, so those are human spots, right? Yep. Now, a skimmer spot where you have an automated server somewhere that's monitoring X number of kilohertz of bandwidth on multiple bands or single band or whatever, they will always show up with this dash pound sign. So you know, this is a real spot because I I run a skimmer server with my use my call uh, using my call sign. Yep. And so earlier today, I spotted TX5S on uh, 10 meters. Yep. So that that's the dead giveaway. You know, that is a a skimmer spot. Gotcha. And, <laughs> okay. okay. I did not know that. I I I thought that maybe the cluster server put that pound sign in there but so you're saying that the dash and the pound sign i'm doing this because i'm filtering stuff on node red and i'm informing myself right now um oh, good. Good. that if i search for if i'm pulling the cluster server and pulling down these telnet spots and i search for a pound sign in the the de call sign good chances that is a skimmer spot yeah, I mean, it, it is typically, unless I don't even know if you could log in on a standard cluster using a pound sign. Gotcha. So, now, this is a little unusual here. Um, some of the skimmer server operators will have mul multiple skimmers on with different SSIDs, they call this. Yep. And so, like KZ7I. Is it w, WZ7I off the top of my head in Pennsylvania? He's a seven call in Pennsylvania, but he's got... He's got a killer skimmer server set up. He hears all kinds of stuff I can never hear, and it's really annoying here in Utah. <laughs> but um, he has, I think he has multiple. So you'll see like a, a dash three or a dash two or whatever. Okay. Um, so that's what that is. It's just, you can do that. You can log in with an SSID on any cluster server. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. I've, I've done that before. So I've got AA0Z, my regular one, but I've got AA0Z-1 that I use whenever I log into your server to pull contest stuff. Oh, yeah, because the, the server-side filter is going to be different for your SSID. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of operators don't know that. So um, back to the skimmer spot. This is this is very standardized. They'll all If it's a CW spot, it's going to start with CW, and then they'll give a relative strength and speed of the code that was decoded you know this is kind of arbitrary to the to the server skimmer side right the preamps and everything that's going on there but it, it's a good way to kind of get a relative idea of the strength of that signal that the skimmer server spotted yep and again you're getting the originating state here yeah k3pa is Kansas, or well no this is a good this here's a good thing k3pa would be pennsylvania normally but he's actually in kansas so gotcha. the FCC call sign database shows that as originating. So okay. if you're only, if you set a filter for originating spots from certain states, you're, you should be getting spots from those states. Okay, one last thing before we move on. Uh, you'll see the WWV spots come yep. in for the uh, solar index information, yep. solar flux index and all that. And your logging software, including like N1MM or WinTest or um, DX Lab spot collector or whatever is going to find that, right? It's going to filter on that. It's going to update there little window that shows you the current solar conditions and somebody you know guys love doing this they'll set up automated ae5e automate setting this up and sends out the update every three hours or four hours or whatever it is so, so. yeah i like i like uh whenever that comes across it's uh it's interesting so now i i i told kyle i, I kind of like how we're winging it here um, do you have any questions coming in at all kyle or well matt had a question i don't know if we need to answer that answer this question right now but he said max could you suggest a way to set up a local dx spotter for private use not connected to the internet um so he wants to get spots for for stations that uh, local well, to him. I, yeah well i i th matt i think what you're wanting to do is like set up just a private dx spotter for your maybe for your um your club or okay. your area, and then, you know, instead of, like here in St. Louis, if you tune to 156.200, everyone has got their two-meter radio tuned to that, and you'll just hear randomly, it's just like, uh, Tanzania's on uh, on 20 meters, you know? So then they'll talk about it, so it's almost like a like a party line, right, on two meters, and they're just, they're just announcing the spots. 
And Matt says, yeah, local to me. So I guess Matt wants to run like maybe a, uh, a local, uh, spotting service that he controls who logs in and who log and, and it's only, he can see and maybe the people that, uh, that have access. Yeah. So that that's common. You'll, you'll have a club that has somebody in the club will set up a server of a cluster server instance that's connected to the worldwide feeds of human spots, FT mode spots, CW skimmer spot, all, all the spots. And they'll run it on some crazy port or somehow password protect the server. So only the club members can connect, but then it's dedicated to that club, the server side, but they're still, they have access to all the worldwide feed. Yeah. Um, in fact, I run a dedicated server. I've got a good relationship with FRC in Pennsylvania. And so I have a dedicated AR six node. Anybody can log in, but it's dedicated kind of for the FRC guys. Gotcha. Uh, so okay. they, they like AR six, right? The, a lot of historically they've been fans of the AR six command set and filtering. Yeah, I think Matt. I think what what we'll do is once Max shows us the back end of the server, maybe that will give you some ideas on how to how to maybe set something up. Okay. All right. Well, um, we we touched on. Now I'm I'm on this my my uh, definitive third slide here. <laughs> <laughs> the so, end is the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when Kyle started, I mean we're we're going to talk about some you know more uh, complex DX command sets for filtering, but it's similar to what we talked about before, but maybe we'll spend a little more time on it. So the first thing I wanted to direct everybody to is the URL that you can see on the slide is where Kyle has his web browser opened up to. Yeah, so let me let me add this to the scene. And so my web browser is down there in the corner. The one below me is Max's screen, and the one down there underneath Max is my web browser. Okay. So if you want to get to this, I mean, this is kind of, this is like 15 year old HTML technology or static web page. Uh, but if you go to, I also run a really simple web cluster where you cannot send spots. It's just read only. If you go to nc7j.com, November Charlie 7Juliet.com, or like National Contest Journal, nc7j. Dot com that might help you remember it at the bottom of that web page guys love this thing and it's super simple i mean that this i've had millions of hits on this page it's unbelievable <laughs> uh, but at the bottom of that page there's the link to the ar6 down here user manual yep okay so we're let's not spend a lot of time on connecting to the cluster Okay. Let's let's kind of start kicking the tires on <clears throat> what happens when somebody connects to a cluster, and then we'll we'll go from there. Let's go. So, okay, let's go. So, is there somebody in the chat? We we can use his his or her call sign to yeah. log into a cluster. Let's yeah. See. So we're gonna we're gonna use Matt K nine E I. He's in Indiana. Okay. I mean, I better make a note because I'll yeah. Do that. Uh, now, Matt, here's a. The local huge. My middle name is Matthew, and in, outside the amateur radio world, I go by Matt. So I'll remember your name, but I won't remember your uh, oh, K9. What was it again? EI. K9 E. Okay. EI. Okay. Oh, like Ireland. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll remember. Yep. That. Um, all right. So Matt, he's okay with us logging in. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you permission. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal, I guess. So I'm gonna share, and if we have time. I'm rambling. I'm going to actually use the Telnet client capabilities of the DX Lab Suite, the, the, the tool that's used for spotting, collecting spots from DX clusters is called Spot Collector. Imagine that. So okay. DX Lab Spot Collector. It's free. DX Lab has, has amazing feature set. It's overwhelming and everything else, but it's free and it's well maintained and well documented. Um, so I'm going to open up. A window here. I'm going to share this, Kyle. So we're going to do the base kind of back to basics a little bit here. I like it. Okay. Oops. If I click the right window here. Um, okay. I think my video is a little laggy. I it's, never mind my video. As long as you're as long as you're getting the screen share, that's all that matters. Okay. Um, let's. Okay. I'm actually actually need to close that. So stand by. Because I have to go into, um, bear with me here. 
bear with me here. I didn't think this, about this. We're live. This is this is what you get whenever you get to, you get this is how the sausage is made. Okay, exactly. What I'm doing is I'm setting up setting up spot collector to log in with Matt's call sign automatically. Well, just we'll, maybe we'll get to that. Um, yeah, let me know when you're ready. Okay, finally, back to sharing a window here. Uh, give you a chance to wet your whistle there. Okay. All right. There we go. Got it. So, and I, uh, this should be good enough. Can I make it taller or is that going to make things smaller? Uh, it make makes it smaller. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the big uh -huh. fatty right there. Yeah. That's real good. That's okay, so real now, good. If the planets are lined up, when I click this connect button, this is just a standard telnet window that's going to connect to my server sitting in my shack here, which maybe we'll show later. Okay. And it's going to have, I'm assuming Matt's never logged in there, so it'll have the default filter set. So when I click connect, yep, there we go. It, it, uh, DX Lab spot collector automatically entered Kyle or Matt's call sign, K9EI. Okay. And so he's connected now. And the default filter for him is to pass only human spots originating from North America. Okay. So, so only, now you're, yeah. only spots that people are entering manually is what he has seen. Yes. Okay. Now there's, there's one case, you might see some spots from W3 LPL. He injects some skimmer spots into the human network, um, which I find okay. Some, some guys don't like it. Sometimes they'll. Oh, oh spot, Frank. Oh, Frank. I mean, he's got that huge station. He's, he's got he's a monster a, he's, station. He's an amazing ham, right? He's, he's one of the top notch guys out there. So well versed in everything ham radio related. Um, so anyway, you may see a spot that really came from a skimmer. That's usually the only thing. So here's, it's funny. Here's N6ZN-15 just, he, you know, he's chatting on the cluster. He just spotted TX5S. What's up? He is very strong. <laughs> you know, there's only so many characters. I mean, we're talking about a limited. As, as long as it doesn't become an 80 meter conver conversation about colonoscopies. Oh, yes, that's right. Or gout or, you know. <laughs> things like that or something. <laughs> so, so Matt here, he, he's connected and you know, this is cool. He's, he's seeing spots from originating from North America. Now let's, let's type in some commands here. So everything's abbreviated on these cluster servers. So the standard command is show DX. Right. I, can you see me typing that? Yep. In? I got it. Yep. So all manual here, we're not integrating with soft software. It is behind the scenes, but, we just you got to understand the basics to really know what's going on here. So I just I said show me the last 20 DX spots that came in. Okay. And those all originate from North America. And another thing we should do for Matt is if you go to the manual, right? Yeah, you're kind of following along there. If you go to the manual, if you go back to the DX command. Okay. So Kyle, if you so go let back, me, uh, let me add this to the scene. And if I let's uh, let's bring this up some. Yeah. So if I if I go, go to, to the, the manual top. here. Yeah. Go to the top of the manual. OK. The top of the page. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, keep, right. Right here. Um, the command summary is where we're going to focus. If you want to read up on some of the basics, you can stay here. So we're going to look at the DX command group. OK. So if you click on DX there, it'll start giving, it'll jump, jump down to the section for the, the DX. Ah, oh, okay. Got it. So here we're doing a show DX. Okay. Okay. So, um, but there's also some set commands where we can set settings. We, I want to, Matt wants to see where these spots are really originating from because nobody knows based upon your call sign, where you really live, right? What state you're really in, you know, this November Delta two Oscar might be in, Hawaii for all we know, you know, or Maine or New Hampshire, or, you know, probably not in New York, who knows? So we want to turn on an option to show, and you can, there's, if you scroll down there, you would find this section in the manual, Kyle. It's called the DX extension. We're going to use a few characters out of that note field. Okay. So we're going to set DX extension, I'm abbreviating here, to spotter 
state. And this will persist for Matt's login with canine IE. So now when spots come in, you're going to see the originating, um, whoever spotted it, you're going to see their, their state they're in based upon their FCC registered data. So there, hey, there's W3LPL. He's in Maryland, but he just posted a skimmer spot that was heard in British Columbia, you know, north of me. Gotcha. Okay. But now it's turned this on. That, that Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Oh, man. And I just, I double clicked on that and the software automatically QSY my radio and the whole bit there. <laughs> so, all right. I'm all, I'm all a Twitter waiting for TX5S to come on 160 meters. It's the last HF band slot I need for him. Um, all that's right. Why, so, that's why we're streaming early today is to, so <laughs> Max can get uh, uh, that station on 160. On CW, which means I already got him on FTA. So I already have the DXCC band, <laughs> right? Right. It's just bragging rights. I got to get him on CW 160. Um, it's rare we have this rare of an entity so close to US, right? It's 2,100 miles away south of us. Yeah. So, um, okay. So a couple spots have come in. Now we know that N9NC is actually in New Hampshire, not the Midwest somewhere. Right? Yep. He's in. So these spots, you know. And so let's say Matt, who I don't know where Matt lives. We could look him up. Now, Matt, is he okay if I do a, I mean, we can all look up his address. Are we going to dox him here if I, if I look him up? Uh, uh, he lives in Indiana somewhere. We all know that. Okay. So I can look up call signs. You, you, can, look, you, you can look up me. Um, okay. A is your address. And so nobody uses that anymore, right? Back in the day, that was popular, right? But now we have QRZ and everything else. But that's an up-to-date call sign data for Kyle there. Yep. Kyle, Kyle T. I won't pronounce it. Craig. It's Craig, just okay. Craig. All right. So um, anyway, so we know he knows where those spots are coming from. Well, I don't know how big Matt's station is. Maybe he's W3 LPL. He has, you know, 12 towers with stacks of beams on, you know, six meters all the way down through 80 meters with a full size two element beam. Or it's close. It's very oh, close. Sure. It's very close. <laughs> but if he has a simple station, he's going to be more interested in spots that are originating closer to him. If he's in a more populated area, I mean, if right. you live in Nebraska, North or North Dakota or South Dakota, or even Utah, there's not going to be a lot of human spot activity. So depending on where you live, you're going to have to figure that out. Um, West Coast and East Coast, just, most of those spots are going to be originating from the areas with more hams. And everybody that's watching this, once you understand all this, you start spotting stations you're working. You got to share the wealth. If you get on and work somebody, spot them. Right. Yes. Yeah, send the spot. Um, now, Kyle, checkpoint here. Am I? Are we going okay here? We're Any good. Questions? We're good. I think we probably got another 20 minutes, and then we might want to uh, switch to the server. Okay. So let's just make it simple. Let, let's go by CQ zone. This gives you a kind of wet your whistle for different filtering capabilities here. So first of all, if we just turn on the worldwide feed here, um, what Matt is going to see, he's not going to see FT mode spots. He's going to see a worldwide feed of primarily CW skimmer spots, maybe a few RTTY spots and human spots. So if he just says, puts in set DX filter, that's going to clear the filter and hello, er, you know, everything's yeah. going to start coming in. Yep. So now, now the the fire hose is on. Yeah, and this is kind of a repeat of last time, but I, I don't know how else to go about it. Uh, so now he can narrow that down. He can say, he can say, all this is available in that manual that Kyle's shown. He can type in set DX filter um, skimmer. So he wants to see skimmer spots and um, spotter CQ zone. Does he know what ZQ zone he's in? Uh, I'm, I'm in like three. Is he in uh, I think we're four. Yeah. Okay. So, and spotter CQ zone equals four. Um, and now he's only going to see skimmer spots that originate from CQ zone four. If there's any skimmers there. <laughs> could, could, could be. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's. Oh, there oh here we go. Yeah, there we go. So oh, there's a nine can. station. There's some nice yeah. stations, yeah. So now it's a little more isolated, right? He's not getting, um, you know, spots from the West Coast. Who, you know, we hear all the J's and Asia, East Coast doesn't hear them. So the you know, et cetera. 
the 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 point of that is you want to only filter if you're if you're contesting right and you hook your your n1mm up to a cluster server and you are assisted and you're going down the band map of clicking on spots why not filter your your zone or your your view of the world of possibly spots and stations that you could possibly hear because what's the point in trying to figure out if you can hear a spot that was heard in Washington DC if you're located it in California exactly spot on so, so uh, no pun intended or pun intended yeah um, so so now Matt's seeing CW skimmer spots RTT there's an RTTY one that came across yep but, but if he wants to include human spots and I'm kind of breaking this down he could set a filter like this so he could go set uh, DX filter skimmer and seek um, spotter CQ zone you can also do uh, IPU zone too I think or what's the other one um, anyway well, let's go CQ zone yep um, equals four or not skimmer and um, spotter country CTY equals K. And those are the standard prefixes. So K is for US. So if you if you type in another command, it erases the old command. And so you can only have one one filter set, but that filter can be a compound filter, like you just put in. So right. you're your ors and your ands, if you don't understand o ors and ands, you should probably go read up on um, some programming language, uh, ors, and, uh, ors and ands. I forget what that's uh, what those operators are called um, in the programming world. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the Well, you got the Boolean stuff and then... But, the, yeah, and know. then somebody in the chat will, will keep us honest yeah, on what sure. that means. Yeah, two programmers here and we're not coming up with the term there. Um, so, so now he's going to, you're mostly going to see skimmer spots cause they're more prevalent, but he should also see some human spots. So that allows you by default, you're going to see every spot. So there was a human spot that came in W seven FW in Illinois, just spotted the UA three yep. as a human spot. Did you see that? And, and you can, you can probably rule that as a human spot because it didn't have a comment and it didn't look like a skimmer spot, right? Yeah, and it didn't have the pound, the dash pound. Oh, and it didn't have the, yeah, it didn't have the pound. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. You can also turn off the spots. Um, you can set DX output. This is all in the manual off, right? I mean, now you're not going to get any more spots. Yeah. Uh, set DX. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the manual that 99% of the users out there won't ever use. So you got to spend some quality time studying that and playing around. So I yep. just turned the output back on. Um, and so, you know, VE6 just spotted a, a JH4 in Alberta. So the, 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 the real power of filtering is to only, to really concentrate your effort on spots that you could, the stations that you could possibly hear yes. at your QTH. Yes. Right? What is, so... Uh, a perfect example is it's three o'clock in the morning. Matt knows this firsthand because I contest with Matt and it was three o'clock in the morning. I don't even know what contest it was. And, you know, we were connected to NC7J or I'm sorry, uh, VE6CC, uh, right? And I literally I, from three to four o'clock in the morning, all I did was just click on spots that I couldn't hear. Right. And I just remember going down the 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 band map and every single spot that I clicked on I couldn't hear because it was just a flood of spots that was in my band map. What I should have done was made a filter to say just give me the spots that I could possibly hear in Missouri, and then that would have been a better use of my time at three o'clock in the morning versus just clicking on every single spot that I see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, good, good clarification there. And you'll you'll have some guys that'll say, well, I just want every single freaking spot there is out there, you know, originating from anywhere. Now, if you had a superstation, if you were in the Caribbean, or sometimes that's good, right? 
Uh, yeah. But it's not typical for the kind of the average postage stamp like station. I'm in a small suburban lot and, um, you know, I can do well depending on the time of day or whatever, but I don't care about what some European spotted, right? I yeah. literally yeah. never, rarely if ever care. Um, so that's what's important. But you could get all the spots and then let your computer logging software potentially do some filtering too. Like spot collector, you can go in and set filters there, but it's going to be all on the client side. I, I, again, it, I, to me, it's very important to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So then you yeah. can decide where you want some pre-filtering done and then maybe some more finer grain, granular filtering in your software. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good, <clears throat> that's a good idea. Maybe you do a general filter, you know, so let's say in a QP, you're only wanting to look at spots that are in the United States, right? Uh, potentially. Well, I guess you, you want the DX too. So, um, that's, yeah, a bad, so you, that's, that's a bad example. Well, I, well, not, not really. L let me kind of say, if I stop you there, Kyle. Yeah. So let's say I'm in Utah. I'm fresh. I mean, Utah, there's not too many guys that are going to get on any QP. Um, sideband especially, CW. So I know I'm going to be a wanted entity and it's a domestic contest primarily. So I'll create a filter that says, I want to see any spot that originates from, from VEs and Ks. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. And it's, it's a domestic spot. So it's got to originate from North America, basically. From inside, from inside the U.S. and Canada. But I, yeah, right? but I only want the spot station to be inside. From, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. North you, America, yeah. Right. You want to hear everything that the North Americans are hearing. Right. Yeah, and it, because that's going to be more important, right? Even if there's a multiplier, N1M is going to see that it, something as a multiplier based on my call history. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Even if I can't hear them, I, I go and can't hear them, but I know they're out there. You know, right. in some cases it's okay. Uh, so, no, good, good point there. Um, so, really, we're, we're kind of back to basics, everyone here. You, you know, somebody's sophisticated filter is what I just showed you. If I were to get on my server and I had to walk through the 50 guys that are logged in there right now, guys and gals potentially, and I looked at their filters, which I can do as, you know, as a sysop probably one out of 10 is actually doing any filtering. They're, they're using the default filter. They're only seeing, because I set that, the default filter for their call sign. Right. They're only seeing human spots originating from North America. They don't yeah. understand that the skimmer spots are there. Yeah. Yep. 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 They, the majority of the people that are logged in just don't utilize the, harness the power of the filters. Right. Right. So, so maybe Kyle, if there's questions, maybe what I want to do now is, so this, this window that's moving around there, Yep. Uh, we're kind of happy with that fit. If I show DX filter and Matt's pretty happy with that for right now, he's seeing human spots and skimmer spots, but now he wants FT mode spots. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to stop sharing this window. Okay. okay. And I'm gonna, that's it's still open on my desktop. Yep. And I'm going to pop open another window we're going to share. I'm going to share. Let's see here. Okay. Got it. Okay, so now this one will connect to port 7374, which has somewhat become a standard in the AR6 world anyway. So if I connect now, Matt's canine IE is going to connect to... Um, and there's the fire hose. Yeah, here's the fire hose here. And he's getting, I don't know what the show DX filter. I, I may have it wide open. Yeah, it's wide open. So he, he uh, um, let me, I'm going to turn off the spots. Set DX output off. Show okay. DX filter. Yeah, so I, I guess I have it wide open. So it's, I mean, there's only skimmer spots on this node, on this server cluster node. Okay. Um, so he's getting everything worldwide. So that, I mean, it's crazy. DX output on. So another thing we want to do is set DX extension to spotter state. So for stateside stuff, you'll see the state. 
and Canadian provinces. So you can see, you know, how much is going on there. Yeah. So, okay, so let's let's set a similar filter like we did before, but we know it's only skimmer spot. So we can go set DX filter spotter uh, CQ, CQ zone equals four. Right. Boom. Now we're going to. Now we got now some limited stuff. Limit yourself a little bit. You know, you, you're dealing with uh, FT mode skimmers that are in CQ zone four. <clears throat> Right. I don't know. It's including Alberta. Is that in CQ zone four? It might be. Eh, it might be off a little there. Um, so where are we at here? Wow. I can't believe we're 40 minutes in here, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> okay so, so let's kind of tie this together. This is like the secret sauce that I, I swear one in 50 guys will ever do that. They'll run out to websites and look at spots and create some filters, or whatever, but they won't have it all integrated with their logging software. Okay. So what I want, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Okay. And I'm going to share Spot Collector of DX Lab. Okay. And um, Dave AA6, I, the guy's a he, the guy's a savant with what he's coded here, a one man show. Um, but we're going to show Spot Collector here. You seeing that? Yep, got it. Okay. All right. Is that I can make it smaller. Looks good. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. There you go. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so now what Spot Collector is now doing is my log, NG7M, I've logged, I don't know, over 160,000 stations, right? So there's, and I chase DX. I'm not as hardcore as some, but um, I contest and I chase DX. And so... Um, you're not going to see a lot of spots that say it's a new one for me. Okay. Okay. But that's the idea here. Spot collector is aggregating those two telnet feeds. It's aggregating exactly what Matt, what we set up for Matt, K9 IE. And it's aggregating it and taking that data and putting it in this grid format here. Yep. And he, he's doing all kinds of other lookups on those spots. Seeing it, you know, if it's yellow, they're a logbook of the world user. If they're blue, I think it's, both, you know, they're EQSL and Logbook of the World. If they're pink, then it's EQSL only. You know, if they're white, then they're none of those um, QSL services. Um, here's one, ZD7Z came in for me. I've worked it on this band, but I know since I've configured DX Lab to, to show me um, stations that I've worked, but I haven't confirmed in a different color, the default color, that ZD7Z is one I haven't confirmed yet. Did you see it made it perfect? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, what is your your need um, your need color? Is it red? Um, it depends on. You can get pretty man. It's crazy how sophisticated you can get inside Spot Collector. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> I think it's red. <clears throat> you know, if it was an all time new one, it'd probably be red. Uh, and I think it's I. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So this is the, these, these are all the spots. I don't need any of this stuff, right? They're just black. This is the aggregated feed. And he also filters out duplicates, which is nice. The latest is at the bottom. You could sort it so the latest is the top. But I don't, I don't pay that much attention to this feed. What I want to do is I want to see the needed stations that have been spotted. So if I click on need, then these are the stations that have been spotted since... I last logged into Spot Collector, which was earlier today. Now, I, I'm pretty aggressive on the human spots right now. So it's spotting. Um, I'm getting originating spots from all over North America, and I'm getting bad spots too, which are, that happens on a skimmer once in a while. So some of these spots, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know why that showed up. Um, it, may have been, it may have been from when we were showing everything, right? Yeah. We were screwing and everything. In. So Spot Collector in the background was, was sending those spots out. But here's those two that came in that I haven't confirmed. Right. And so it's really cool, right? As you work them, as you confirm them, you know, this is your go-to screen. You can turn on audio alerts. You can turn on email alerts. Um, so the, the, um, your DX Labs, which is a logging program, it is taking in all of these spots and it's comparing it to the 160,000 QSOs that you have logged in your database and it has figured out and put it into a filter here that you're 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 looking at 
on things you need, things you don't, or uh, things that haven't gotten been confirmed, things that um, uh, are are stations that you potentially need, um, and then it, col it colorizes and and filters those cues that uh, potentially are uh, are DXCC entities or or whatever you filter you you uh, you set up it displays them in this in this grid right and we we had all those other spots because we had a full-on feed with matt's filter yeah and so it was showing me stuff originating other some wild stuff that I've, i haven't confirmed or whatever so this is what it normally would look at right now the only spots that have come in based upon the filters we set for matt's call sign is zd 7 z oh okay um, gotcha and they see these spots originated in california with bob's skimmer bob N6 TV, TV Bob. Yep. And then K5EM is actually in Washington, Washington State. And so I guarantee I can go on to 18 megahertz here and I will decode ZD7Z if he's still there or 40 meters. Yeah. I could I could work him and then go through the jump through the hoops to confirm or whatever. Right. <laughs> you know, not everybody does logbook of the world, unfortunately. So right, right. But um, the 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 main the main thought process or the takeaway is spots are coming in and they're getting your DX lab program is, is coming in and, and filtering, doing some more advanced filtering and displaying these spots out on, on um, spot checker or spot filter or whatever it's called. They can't see it up there. Um, yeah. Spot collector. Collector. So yeah, and I don't do any additional filtering um, other than here, right? It based upon what I've already worked or confirmed. Right, or, right, right, right. I've worked, I haven't confirmed. Uh, <clears throat> because I know the command set. So I do most of it on the server, but there's a lot oh, of other I filtering. You can, you can get sophisticated. You can do like SQL based filtering on the client side. So you could even do crazy wild SQL based stuff if yeah. the server side filtering didn't do it. Gotcha. Uh, now, if you had a worldwide feed of FT mode spots and human spots, you know, CW skimmer and the FT mode skimmers. There, there's a lot of processing that's going on in spot collector. So you depend on your PC, you may overwhelm it. A lot of guys that it was like, oh, it's too slow or whatever. It's because they've they're overwhelming it with spots. If they filtered that on the server, then it's much more manageable. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Good so, deal. Now this all carries <laughs> over to contest logging software too, which you already mentioned, Kyle. So N1MM. Right then, you're going to set a filter based on the contest you're in and the multipliers you're looking right. for. Right, and and sometimes N1MM already does that for you. Right, it's got some. It knows yeah. that you're working NAQP, and it's mm -hmm. it's whenever you you uh, connect, it is automatically trying to figure out what you've already worked and what is a multiplier and what is not a multiplier, and showing that in blue or 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 actually red for a multiplier. But then sometimes spots come in on the band map as blue and it's a, it's a second multiplier in, in CQ worldwide or, you know, um, yeah, like a double multiplier, a yeah. double multiplier. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an all time new zone or yep. something, right. Uh, you know, across all bands or it's a new zone on a new, on a new band. Yep. Um, so yeah, it'll exactly. do that for you. Yeah. And a lot of times it'll look at the call history. If you have a call history load file loaded for that contest from previous years, you know, it'll use that as a reference of where that station is actually right, right. located. Yep. So it'll use that for showing that too. Yep. Um, so the, the big gun stations or multi twos, I mean, this real serious guys. Um, for example, 10 years ago, I worked at N3RS in Pennsylvania. We did, we did, you know, cutthroat multi two stuff with uh, at the time. And the skimmer feeds were pretty new then. And um, I mean, those stations rely on the skimmer spots and human spots just um, relentlessly. They have backup feeds, everything, right? It's critical for those stations to win those contests with all the spotting networks. Yeah. And they know they know these filtering commands. They understand how it works. They understand the amount of data that they're going to get, right? They they know this. And but the little little pistols can use it all too. If you want to be assisted now in NAQP, which is um, allowed, right? You can take advantage of all this. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we right. need to run over to the uh, yeah. So let's let's go to the server end of that. So what you're 
you're going to bring up the actual server that whenever we telnet into NC7J, this is what we're actually telnetting into. Yeah, and I hope this window won't be too big, Kyle. Let's see. Yeah, so this is the server. How's that? Looks great. All right. So now I'm running I'm running an actual server OS. This is Windows Server 2012 R2. It's old right now. I probably need to upgrade here someday. But this is a, a multi-core server. It's a it's an older Xeon processor with 18 cores, um, 36 threads. There they all are chugging yep. away here. Um, so a whirlwind tour here. The Windows Server software for AR6 is right here. This is my main server side node, and I can look at all the users that are connected. Here's Kyle right here. So I can look at his configuration. I can look at his filter. Um, he doesn't have a filter, so he's getting lots of spots right now. Um, he's getting a full <laughs> feed, but yep. that's okay. Um, you know, AA3BUD, AA3B, amazing SO2R. Op is always connected here. It's one of his backup nodes. So, I, you know, I could look at his filter or whatever, but here's all the users that are connected. Now, I can't, I can show some of the spot logging. You get a, me, yeah, me, let, let's, let's not uh, do passwords or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, configuration yeah, yeah, stuff. Know. Yeah. But so th this runs in Windows. And where do you download, like, if you want to dabble in the server? end of it where do you go um uh, yeah, there's groups io groups there's one for the ar cluster okay um so you'd have to be a little persistent you have to get on there and and um you know google i have links to the server side software but you have to get it's kind of a tight-knit community on the on the sysops we want i mean it's open wide right right but, but you want people that are going to be dedicated to running these things 24 seven, right? It, it's not cheap running this server year right. after year after year. Uh, and so if you can kind of convince somebody you want to get set up, somebody will create a uh, call sign certificate for you that'll allow you to use the server and it's free, but you, you just have to be persistent for AR cluster. Now VE seven CC, I think he charges 50 bucks or 60 bucks. Um, and the expider I think is free <coughs> out there. Okay. But I, I think the more the moral of the story is, if you live in an area, if you're dedicated to do this, and you have you have quite a few clock cycles, and you've got some pretty good antennas, and you want to set this up and run it twenty four seven, and you're in an area that currently does not have a lot of of um, like if you there's I don't think there's any spotting networks in Missouri, right? So if I lived on a mountaintop in Missouri and I had some some good antennas, maybe I would be a good candidate to say, hey, I'm I'm gonna dedicate some some server resources and I live in Missouri and there's no current spotters in Missouri. Um, you know, can I get in? And I, I guess you need to be persistent. And then you know somebody was like, oh yeah, we need a spotter some spotting in Missouri, uh, we're going to, we're going to let you, you know, connect to the server and, and here you go. Right. Right. And that's pretty open as far as you getting the worldwide feed effectively. Okay. Um, what we really need, if you really want to make somebody happy is if you're in a state that doesn't have a CW skimmer set up 24 yeah. seven, set it up, you'll be a hero. And that, there's a lot of States missing CW skimmers. We have two in Utah because of, you know, me and another guy down south who's a great guy. No, but some states don't even have them. We're, Idaho, Wyoming. We're um, actually going to put one at the contest station. We've got a red papaya. Perfect. And oh, uh, yeah, we're in the process of doing that. So this is why I'm asking the questions. I mean, I'm sure that the ward in Zero AX no, already knows what, what to do. I'm just informing oh. myself so I don't like a, look like a total doof in, in front of ward. <laughs> yeah. So just decide, you know, you know, if he decides on different server software, that's fine, but he'll need to make connections to other DX yeah. clusters. And it's more ubiquitous on the server side. You can connect to different skimmer server types and that they interoperate. So for example, that's why I pulled this up right here. Here's my outgoing connections to other skimmer servers. And effectively, once I connect to three or four of these skimmer servers, 
I'm going to get a full feed because they're all networked together. Yeah. I mean, if, I, if I'm connected to K1TTT and W3LPL and, um, you know, KQ8M and AI9T, who is not running AR6, it all interoperates. And it so that's all where, replicates. Yeah. So if you log into NC7J uh -huh. and send a spot, it's going to, that spot's going to replicate out to all of these servers. Yeah. And if they didn't already get your spot replicated from another server, they're, they'll just see it as a dupe. But it, it's, it's like this weird incestuous connection web, you know? Yeah. That everybody's connected together. Can I it's, say incestuous? I, I don't know if that's the right word, but. <laughs> it, it's it's almost like the it, it, you familiar with the all star network where everybody can connect to to one another but you can't form a loop. Well, that was a big problem early on in the days. Yeah, so it used to be problems with the loop, but they've 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 cracked that nut. So there's no there's no potential for loops on all the later server versions. L a little spanning tree technology going on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> on your on your switch right. On yeah. Your yep. switch. STP right. The protocol. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got a few minutes here. This will be interesting for everybody. So it's pretty boring, right? We could look at logs and stuff, but that that's kind of boring. What you'll find interesting is how do I get the worldwide feed of skimmer spots? CW, RTTY, blah, 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 and yeah. FT mode. Well, I use an aggregator and not too many guys use this. But I, I think do. the big one is um, just to called CW skimmer, but uh, there's others. Well, I use a piece of software written by a, a, a DF7GB, and it, I really like it because it, it, this is a really confusing screen. But what I have here is if you look at this skimmer server 9 and 10, I'm telling it in to uh, the primary skimmer servers for FT modes, which is um, number 10, or vice versa. I can't remember. It's one or the other. Yeah. One is looking at. Um, CW skimmer spots and RTY skimmer spots. The other one has all of the FT mode spots, which is a crazy amount of data. Uh, but we can look at that. So if I look at all the data coming in, you're going to see all the spots originating from everywhere here. And so you're going to see this big feed here going on. Um, and we're not getting into the details, but I actually connect to this piece of software to get my worldwide feed. So you only see one connection inside my AR6 server to this aggregator. Gotcha. If that makes sense. So there's the uh, CW stuff. And we can look at the, uh, um, here is FT mode stuff. That's just my FT mode skimmer, I think. Must be, oh, 10, nine. This is the one I wanted to show here. Yeah, so here's all the FT modes worldwide coming in. Gotcha. <clears throat> and so that's kind of fun to see. Now, quick digression back to my skimmer server. I have a Red Pattaya single board computer, SBC. Like Kyle mentioned, we're getting off the rails here maybe a little bit. But I run a nine-band skimmer 24-7, and I'm skimming FT modes on maybe eight or – I can't remember if it's all nine bands. Yeah. But here's what I'm decoding at my humble – little 100 foot by 160 foot QTH in suburbia, you know, west of uh, the Wasatch Front here in Utah. And so right now I'm feeding all of those spots there 24-7 um, when I'm not transmitting Yep. into the, the spotting network. So if, if I go to um, PSK Reporter here and you look up, Anyway, if you go to PSK Reporter and look up NG7M, you'll see what I hear from my simple receive antennas. Right, right. But that data is also getting aggregated into the big RBN FT mode feed too. Yeah, yep, so yep. I better stop. You gotta stop me, Kyle. But yep, I think we're at time. Um, yeah, I mean, this is great stuff. I I love all like the the back end and how all this stuff connects and all this this voodoo stuff that goes on that um nobody everyone takes for granted you know of all the things that that go into cluster servers that we just tell that into and it's like oh the information's there <clears throat> but there's there's people like max and frank and uh ve6 uh, cc and all those guys that are dedicated 
day in and day out to keep these cluster servers up and running so we can we can know who's on the bands and be able to to work some dx out there yeah so, exactly and so yeah I, i've never taken donations because i don't want any obligations that way but um <laughs> you know it's it's just fun to give back to the hobby this way right so, so what if i burn 10 or 15 bucks a month on electricity it's fun to do this and i've met a lot of good people right yeah yep yep it's uh thank you for for running the nc7j server it's awesome all right you're welcome kyle all right, uh, Max's YouTube is in the description below if you want to. Uh, uh, Max does a ton of uh, cool stuff on uh, YouTube. He does uh, CW stuff, contest stuff, DXing. So um, go subscribe to Max. Again, his uh, link is in the description. And uh, we'll have Max back on. And uh, we're going to do some like, maybe some live CW chasing. Or we've got a whole bunch of ideas that we might uh, we might throw out there. So anyway uh coffee and ham radio is up next at seven i think we're a minute over but uh thanks guys appreciate it uh thanks max again for your knowledge and uh being on tonight yeah let's do a live cwt with skimmer spots that we should that's what we should do that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do a live cwt and uh yeah walk through it that'd be awesome do a little 40 word per minute contest you know okay <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks max 73, 73 everyone <clears throat> now I got to figure out how to turn this thing off. Oh my gosh. Here we go. All right. Thanks guys. <laughs>